Hey everyone, it's Gabriel here and if you grew up in Singapore, you've probably seen this ad 14 years ago on TV. And very recently, 99.co, a Singapore property portal, has brought him back for a second round. And this has been causing quite a buzz among Singaporeans because it brought back a lot of nostalgic feeling. And more importantly, in the marketing circle, people have been debating, is this a good ad or not a good ad? Is this ad effective or not effective? So in this video, I'm going to do a review of this ad, what I think is good about this ad, and there are some things that we can learn from it, but I also believe there are some things that can be improved uh, and will increase the effectiveness of this company marketing budget. So I'm gonna break this down so that you too can learn how to create million dollar ads on Facebook or YouTube without having to make all the expensive mistakes that company like this may make. So before I dive into it, I really appreciate the early thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm as this will help my channel grow. And if you're new to this channel, I post video weekly revealing how I built multiple seven figure and eight figure businesses online, mainly through social media ads. And the truth is that after spending over seven figures on Facebook and YouTube and generating over $20 million in sales for myself and my clients combined, I've actually made a lot of mistakes that has cost me tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I did everything almost by trial and error and I sometimes wish that someone would have guided me from the start. So that's the reason why I'm creating videos like this so that you can learn from my mistakes for free without having to buy any of my courses so that you too can create better ads to grow your business. On a side topic, occasionally I also post videos about what I'm investing right now and productivity tips on how I get more work done with less time. So if you are into any of this stuff that I just talked about, do consider subscribing to my channel. So let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. The first thing I wanna talk about is the effectiveness of using social media ads to take over your competition and become a market market leader. Social media ads are still considered really, really cheap right now compared to any traditional form of advertising and is super effective in getting a massive reach. Before I talk about 99 Co, I want to bring you the example of Shopee versus Lazada. So Lazada is an e-commerce site backed by Alibaba Group and was actually the market leader for e-commerce shopping in the Southeast Asia market. Another company called Shopee came in much later and rise to fame around 2017. And in just a short three years, in 2020, took over the market position of Lazada and now dominate the entire e-commerce market in Southeast Asia. In fact, what's crazy is that their monthly traffic is now nearly double of Lazada. So what did Shopee did right to win Lazada? Because when Shopee first started, they only had 1 million monthly visitor while Lazada had 10 million. And right now, Shopee has about 12 million per month visitor while Lazada only has seven. Now, there are many factors to their growth, but I believe that one of which is their aggressive amount of cringe-worthy ad on social media. If you live in Southeast Asia, and if I say, what do you remember about Shopee? You probably remember one of these ads. But what kind of ads do you remember about Lazada? Exactly. So why am I bringing this up? Because in Singapore, there's two big dominant market players in the property search platforms. And the first one is 99 Co, which is the ad that we're gonna review, and Property Guru. So they are now in a very similar position. Property Guru started way earlier and has been dominating the market share of property search. If I'm not wrong, they now have at least three to four times more monthly traffic than 99.co. But I believe that if 99co can learn from Shopee in areas of advertising, they can actually outgrow Property Guru if that's what they really want to do. And this ad they have produced lately could be the start. So overall, I believe that as long as you're running ads on any social media platforms and your competitor is not doing it, you have a head start. There's no question whether social media ad works or not. Big companies are using it. Even companies like my companies that's considered small have been using it to overtake our market and become the market leader in every industry that we tap in. So let's review this ad and see what we can learn from it and how it can be better. Hi, I want to buy a house. Which website is the wrong thing? All right, so this really brings back a lot of memory, by the way. I used to love this ad so much. Uh, and this is the, basically the Mocha guy. And uh, yeah, I used to watch TV. And this was one of the few ads that really captured my attention. And until today, I can still remember it. And um, I just really wanted to pause here and just 
talk about the hook of the video. So in my last video, I talked about the first five seconds of your video is the most important because it hooks the people in and it gets people to watch. The hook will usually determine whether people are gonna watch the video or not. So the hook is important to hook in the right audience so that it captures the attention for them to watch the rest of the video. The smart thing about this video is that the hook is really smart. They are actually using what we call a nostalgic hook. So what this means is that you bring back some memories, you bring back some uh, old ad reference that everybody have seen before. You bring back some old pop culture reference that most people would have heard of. And this is a great way to hook your audience in because it actually brings back feelings and emotion of the good old days. We all love the good old days when we were young. So um, I thought this was really smart. They brought back the, the same guy. And this guy actually looks pretty much the same since uh, 13 years ago. And how can you use this when you're creating your ad? You can relate any old ads that people have seen before, depending on which country you're from, you know, maybe 13 years ago, 15 15 years ago, 20 years ago, there's some infomercial, right, that has been playing non-stop. You could parody that, or you could actually use some pop culture reference that's related to what you want to promote and that you can use. So back then, Mocha ad was about property. The first Mocha ad was actually about this guy selling a property. So it makes sense for 99 Co to actually bring this guy back because they are, uh, 99 Co is actually a property search platform. Uh, to give you another example, my friend Peng Jun, who's an awesome marketer by the way, he recently did an event called the Old School News Strategy. And in order to promote the event, he has an ad. And the ad starts with a hook. And the hook is a reference to the movie Back to the Future. So these are some examples of how you can hook your audience in using nostalgic hook uh, and bring back old feelings and emotion of the good old days. So that people associate your brand with that good feeling. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Okay, so before I carry on, they were just showing some of the search platform and the search function. Now, I don't really understand that part because uh, it was done without explanation. Now, maybe they just want to show, you know, okay, that they have different kinds of features and all that. Uh, but I personally was confused by that. Like, okay, why would you just show me a bunch of like search function and like uh, map and everything? Uh, you know, when I went to do a bit more search, I realized that um, 99 Co has a better search function than other platforms, so maybe they're trying to do that, right? But you know, it doesn't mean anything to someone who doesn't know about the industry. I'll talk a bit more about that later on how they can improve this uh, with more benefit based and outcome based uh, copywriting, um, as well as explanation about you know some of their search function, why are they better than the other platforms, okay? But let us just continue first. Absolutely reliable. So easy to use and flexible too. It's working out great for me. Okay, so <laughs> we're already halfway in the ads because this is a really, really short ad. So what he's been doing right now is uh, using what we call a pun uh, as well as metaphor, right? So what he said was, it's absolutely, I forgot what, what did he say? Uh, something about absolutely amazing, is it? Or reliable, okay. So absolutely reliable, right? So easy to use. And flex flexible flexible is working out great for me so all these are examples like what we call pun and this is actually a great way to add humor uh, into your ads so that you add some kind of entertainment value into your ads and we do that all the time so this remind me of an ad agency in the US called Herman Brothers and they are very good with their ads and they like to do this all the time they like to add metaphor and puns into their ad script in order to add some kind of humor and entertainment value into their ads. This is an example of an ad where they are promoting a device that cools your bed so that it feels like you're sleeping on cloud. I feel like you're literally sleeping in a cloud. <coughs> okay, maybe not literally. So can you see that the person say it's like sleeping on cloud and then they, they show they show her falling down on the cloud and then uh, she said not literally, right? So these are ways that you can uh, uh, make best use of metaphors because people can understand metaphors, right? People understand metaphors, people understand puns and you can actually add entertainment value into your ads. So you make it funny and again, you want to create ads that generate emotion, right? Evoke certain emotion in people and humor is one of the best way to do it and, and we do that all the time. Here's some, here's some examples. If you give me 35 cents Look at this best-selling product on Amazon. This aluminium cake pan which was most likely used to bake the cake that was on my face. For example, throw in a box of icing sugar to add some icing on the cake. 
So think about how you can add metaphors, puns, and this kind of jokes into your script so that uh, you add some kind of entertainment value into your ads. All right, so let's continue. So great for me. Want to find awesome home lately? Visit 99 now. <laughs> 99.com. Smarter. All right, so that's the end. And uh, so that was, uh, that really brings back a lot of memory because I remember uh, the old ad was, you know, want uh, want to buy this house and he turned back and called his number. So it was exactly the same thing. So I think for that, uh, I think it was really well done. They just followed the exact same template as what they did. And this also brings to another point that a lot of times you don't have to come up with brand new ideas. You just have to look at what people have done before, maybe five years, 10 years ago. And um, what used to work was still work. Day, right because the principles behind how the ad works are the same so I want to spend some time to talk about this next point right now about this ad so this is very short ad it ends with a simple you know go to this website and it says Sparta property search and then you have this 99.co there is no direct call to action except for just asking you to visit a website now that is something that I wouldn't do in my last video I actually review a low quality budget uh, mattress ad that generated six figures a month, right? Uh, and you can watch that by simply clicking on the link somewhere here, okay? And in that video, I talk about two types of ads. Number one is direct response ad, and number two is branding ad. And this obviously falls under the category of branding ads. Now, I personally do not like branding ads because there is really no fixed ROI that you can see from the ad. The only ROI you can see is so-called brand awareness and maybe more visits to your website. And so it's very hard to track effectiveness of the ad because at the end of the day, you want to track what's important, which is leads generated or at least sales generated. So I know such platform, you know, it's harder to track immediate sales, but what I feel they could do better for this ad is a few things. So number one, instead of just making this ad funny and you know nostalgic, what it could actually do is to add in a bit of educational, uh, which is what I was saying earlier. There wasn't enough explanation of the benefit of using 99.co. Now benefits are different from features. Features would be something like, oh, smarter search platform, smarter search engine. People don't really understand what is a smarter search engine. What people really want, if you are a buyer, you just want to buy a house or a dream house that you're not overpaying for, right? Or if you are a seller, you just want to sell your house faster and at a higher price that you want. So it's simple as that. So if they could have explained why 99.co or maybe some research, right? Where they say research have shown that people using 99.co buy their dream home or sell their house two times faster than traditional ad or other online competitors. Just by simply saying that, right? Rather than saying smarter property search, because again, that does not mean anything to the audience who's watching. The audience want to know the benefit or the outcome. So when you're writing your ad, always remember to think about outcome-based or benefit-based, not feature-based, right? So feature-based would be like, okay, you know, this phone has this camera and this camera is a what, 12 megapixel camera. People don't care. People don't understand what is 12 megapixel camera. But if you say this iPhone can take DSLR quality images, quality pictures, the ones that you pay $3,000 for a camera, you can use, you can take these photos with your iPhone. That's something people can understand. So again, benefit-based versus feature-based. So this ad was a lot more on like feature-based as well as like just a bunch of puns. It doesn't really explain in detail why is this better, okay? So for the examples that I've given you, you could use that in your own ad, right? So don't just show an ad that is just nice, it's nice to see. Now, of course, if they have a lot of budget, you know, like, you know, I, I, I and maybe they don't care about the, the immediate ROI, that's fine. But all I'm saying is why not both? Why not create a direct response ad that is also funny? So you combine both direct response and branding, okay? So that's the first thing I would do, right? Is to add more benefit sentence in 99 code where again, um, you know, people, research have shown people using, uh, people who use 99 Co sell their unit fast, two times faster, or agents are able to get, uh, uh, close their deals, you know, uh, three times faster, something like that, right? So it's more outcome driven. And the next one is this, if I was the one creating this campaign, I would create some kind of call to action where it gets something from the audience, right? So like a simple squeeze page. So instead of just, you know, go to this website and then that's it, there's no way you can track the effectiveness of the ad. What I will do is I'll bring them, you know, to a simple squeeze page, right? So towards the end, instead of turning around and say, go to this website, it'll be something like, go to this website to download, you know, a free PDF 
called 10 ways to save money buying your dream house. Now, I understand that may not suit well in the whole flow of the ad, but you know, if you were to write a script, right, that's what you want to focus on, right? You want to change up some stuff so that at least it flows well. So obviously, it's not going to make sense for this guy to just turn around and say, hey, go to this website to download, you know, to download a free PDF, put your phone, it's too long, right? So he could have said that first. He could have said, prepare a 10 uh, ways to save money buying your dream house PDF. If you want to download, then you turn to the back, go to this website, something like that, right? So of course, it, you know, it still must flow well. So the whole idea is that you can send people to a site like this where it's a simple squeeze page and you can do this with any kind of funnel builder. In fact, uh, we did this on ClickFunnels. If you want to have a 14 day free trial of how you can create uh, templates like this, you know, it took me just less than one minute to create something like this because there was already templates. Um, so, so you can just put, put together a simple PDF where 10 ways to save money by buying your dream house and then just collect name and email address first so that you know when you spend money on this ad, there is a number of leads that's coming in. So at least it's justify some kind of ROI that's coming from the ad. If you watch one of my previous videos on Digital Marketing 101, which I will put the link somewhere here, okay? I talk about the four steps of digital marketing. And the four steps is basically gathering, capturing, nurturing, and closing. So what they did well here is gathering, right? They went to uh, YouTube, right? And they created an ad that is amazing. People are talking about this ad but there was no other way for them to capture the information unless they go to the website and create an account, which, you know, if they are not thinking of buying a house now, they are not thinking about selling a house now, they will not. Because some people may not want to sell their house now. Some people may not want to buy their house now. But one year down the road, things could change. And when one year down the road, you want to build a relationship, which is what we call nurturing, so that when they finally think about buying a house or when they are finally thinking about selling their house, 99.co is the first brand they will think of. And how do you do that? You at least must capture that information. So if you give some kind of free um, PDF, right? And you know, capture their name and email address. So now it is added into their email list. And what they can do right now is to start sending emails to nurture the audience. And these are things that you don't even need to spend extra time to do because for the 99.co, when I went to do a search on their, uh, on their website, they are already writing a lot of blog posts. Right? So what they can simply do is that every time they write a blog post, they can send an email to their email list. So let's say this ad, right? This ad that they generated at the end, you know, download this free PDF right now. And let's say they get, you know, 100,000 people downloading their free PDF. Now they have 100,000 people that they can send consistent emails to. And whenever they write a blog, right? They can send an email and say, hey, we have written an article about, you know, maybe should you use your CPF to buy a property or not? Something like that, right? And they send an email to that 100,000 people. What they're doing right now is adding value to the 100,000 people. And what this does is that it actually creates another thing called the mere exposure effect. So what is the mere exposure effect? The mere exposure effect is that the more exposed your audience is to your brand, the more they will subconsciously trust you. Because today there's so many noises, right? There's so much noise in the market. Everybody is marketing something, everybody is selling something. And in order for you to build trust with your audience, your audience need to feel familiar with you. So there's this principle called the mere exposure effect. In order for an audience to feel uh, relatable to a brand, they just need to see the brand maybe four or five times. But today, because of so much noises out there, 20 times, at least 20 times. Which means that they either have to see your ad 20 times which is not gonna be likely, right? If they see your ad 20 times, the same ad for 20 times over and over again, they're gonna get bored of it, right? If you can capture their emails and you can start sending them emails, start sending them values, right? And they read some of your blog posts, sometimes they read some of your email, right? Every email that they open is one exposure, which means that if one year down the road, they have at least opened 20 of your emails and have gained some value, and finally they decided, okay, you know, when time is right, they want to buy a house or they want to sell a house. Because of their 20x exposure, because of their familiarity principle, 99.co will be the first brand they will think of when it comes to buying and selling a house. Right now, it's not. Right now, to be very frank, if I want to buy or sell a house, I want to find somewhere to rent or whatever, it's Property Guru. So 99co needs to be able to do that, right? Now, of course, you know, they have a lot of marketing budget. You know, I could be wrong, by the way. That will be what I'll do in order to close the gap as fast as possible. Okay, so now again, this is about 99 Co, but ultimately it's about your business, right? Think about how you can capture, always capture, right? When you, when you create a great ad, always capture your audience detail and then nurture them because of the mere exposure effect. And even if they are not ready now, one year down the road, six months down the road, when they think about 
you know, your services, when they think about, let's say, financial product, when they think about buying insurance, when they think about buying a property, you are the first person to think of because of the mere exposure effect. Okay, so many companies, they missed out on the nurturing because they just simply don't care about their audience. So in summary, Nostalgic Hook is a great way to gather attention and evoke feelings and emotions of the good old times and associate that feeling with your brand. Number two, puns and metaphor can be a great way to add humor and entertainment value to your ad so that people remember your ad even more. Number three, Use benefit-based sentences to explain your product and services. And number four, have some kind of call to action to at least collect an email or other kind of information and then nurture them for the long-term sales. So that's it. These are my thoughts on the 99.co new ad campaign. And I hope that this will help some of you to get some ideas for your own ads. And if you find this video valuable, please remember to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and that will help to grow my channel. And please consider subscribing to my channel. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions and I'll be answering them as soon as I can. That's all I have for you. Bye for now.